Coming up on today's Airborne, the FAA blinks on the third class medical certificate. Garmin has some major upgrades to their touchscreen systems, and Glass Air enters the LSA market. Welcome to Airborne on Aero TV. I'm Ashley Hale. Well, we have a lot of news from Sun and Fun, but there was a significant development for GA pilots announced by the FAA on Tuesday. The agency is beginning a rulemaking project that will consider whether to allow private pilots in certain instances to substitute a driver's license in lieu of an FAA medical certificate. The FAA is considering whether it can provide any relief to the medical requirement while maintaining safety prior to completion of the rule. Information about the private pilot privileges without a medical certificate project will be posted soon in the April report on DOT's significant rulemaking site. And turning now to the show news, there were several new airplanes and simulators introduced at Lakeland this year and some interesting advances in avionics as well. Garmin came to the show with an upgraded system that combines the functionality of a touchscreen with traditional mechanical operation. Jim Campbell has that report. Jim, second day of Sun and Fun 2014. I'm here on the Hell is Frozen Over tour, <laughs> but we're here among other things to see what's new and more important, let's, uh, let's see what's happening to the G3X Touch. What's new? We just announced the G3X Touch a little bit more than a week ago, just in time for people to learn a little bit about it and hopefully uh, run here into Lakeland, Florida, come check it out. Completely new design, completely new uh, system, all new processors, all new software, all new user experience for it. It's really been optimized for the touch experience in the cockpit. It's proven that turbulence isn't an issue, and we're just delighted to bring a uh, non-certified primary flight display, multifunction display product to the, uh, the LSA and the experimental world. You can get multifunction display, primary flight display, engine monitoring, all for uh, $6,100, incredible capabilities. It's an incredibly smooth and fluid and dynamic system that uh, I know customers are going to love. There are airplanes ranging from ultralights to business aircraft on display at Lakeland this year. Among them was Dar Sakata's new TBM 900, the latest entry in the I'm Very Fast turboprop line. We talked with Nicholas Chabert about the new plane. There is nothing that you want to compare between the 700 and 850 and the 900 today. They all have their own positioning in the market. They all have their own answers to the market. The 900 is basically taking one more notch and the challenge that the engineering team was able to take and deliver is actually superb. We didn't want to have the TBM 900 just be an, a performer. We wanted to make sure that we touch the comfort, safety, ease of flying, the cockpit environment also in many details and aspects. So basically we really visited everything with a simple thing in mind. Let's get the German approach. Anything that works, we don't touch. Anything that needed to be evolving, that's where we had actually the challenge to uh, put the engineering team and work it out. We are up to 44 cells so far and we intend to produce 50 aircraft this year. The feedback that we have had so far from the lucky people that put their hands on the aircraft is actually remarkable. Uh, they only have a price to say on the aircraft and we've been very, very pleased with that. When we come back, new airplanes from Glass Air and Technum and new life for the venerable Cessna 172. ADS-V will be mandatory for most aircraft by 2020 in the United States, but you can benefit from ADS-V today with the Bendix King KT-74 Mode S Transponder. The KT-74 meets the global mandates for ADS-V out when attached to a suitable WASP GPS. Rebuilding the sport aviation world one aviator at a time. That's ANN's new Aerosports ebook series, your resource guide to the ultimate in aviation adventures. Aerosport will feature the straight skinny on learning and enjoying 16 unique aviation sports, from ultralights and ballooning to aerobatics, gyroplanes and hang gliders to parachuting, home builds and general aviation to RC models. All this and more will be coming soon with the new updatable Aerosport guide for your favorite electronic devices. Get your advance order in now at www.aerosport.com. 
Welcome back. If you'd like to suggest a story for Airborne Aero TV, our website or podcast, drop an email to news-spy at aero-news.net. Two new LSA airplanes were introduced at Sun and Fun this week. Glass Air's first foray into the LSA market is called the Merlin. Jim Campbell spoke with the company about this new entry in the category. Uh, the Glass Air series spawning an LSA, that is big news. Tell us what you have in mind. So, uh, so Glass Air has, uh, you know, over the 30 years of its history, uh, we've always been a high performance uh, composite uh, aircraft company. And the biggest question we get is, is this an LSA? Well, we finally answered that question. We do have an LSA. So Merlin is our entry-level aircraft into that market, or for those guys that are looking to fly within the sport category or the LSA rules. We went with the Rotax 912 IS, mm -hmm. which is the most advanced Rotax engine being produced right now. We also worked with Dynon. They're introducing the touchscreens in this model. We have BRS parachute for safety factor. And we've been working with everybody within the industry trying to give the pilots what they've been asking for or missing in the LSA market. Italian manufacturer Technam, on the other hand, is well established in the LSA market. Their latest airplane in that segment is the high-end Astore, which was first shown last year at the Aero Show in Germany. Tom Patton talked with Phil Solomon about some of the features of the plane, which made its U.S. debut in Lakeland. What makes this airplane different from some of the other airplanes in the Technum line? Well, obviously, it's a low-wing plane. Um, it's really an evolution stroke revolution of the existing P2002 Sierra, but everything that could have been improved on the Sierra really has been improved on, on this model. So, for example, when you get in the plane, the seats go a lot further back. You have a reinforced area between the two seat rails, which you can stand on. It makes getting into the plane a lot easier. Um, the baggage compartment is now 77 pounds instead of the 44 pounds that it was before. It's an awful lot larger, very easily accessible in flight, and you've also got an external baggage compartment. Then the canopy, instead of just sliding closed, it actually slides to long and then comes down to close, which means you've got a lot more headroom, both for getting into the plane and also when you're in the plane. So wider, much nicer seats. It's a luxury aircraft. In terms of flying characteristics, there's one obvious big difference between this and the, and the Sierra is that instead of having a stabilator, it's now got an elevator. Flight characteristics are just like the Sierra, very, very predictable, very good in crosswinds, very stable. And I guess most people would say it's just a fun plane to fly. You're watching Airborne. We'll be back with more news after these messages. Redbird Skyport is a multifaceted aviation laboratory charged with developing innovative solutions to the issues facing the industry. It started out as a vision for a laboratory where we could objectively measure the systems and the processes that we were developing. Being able to put some objective measures behind the anecdotal evidence that we have about the value of motion and the application of this technology is very, very important because until we can objectively measure it and play that data back, we can't design training systems that make the best use of it. For more information about Redbird Flight Simulations, as well as Redbird's new Skyport, visit www.redbirdflightsimulations.com or www.redbirdskyport.com. It's time for our weekly barnstorming commentary. Today, ANN's Editor-in-Chief Jim Campbell talks about his experience with the Sun and Fun event. <laughs> Well, here we are. It's the Aero News Hell Freezes Over Tour of 2014. Yeah, we're at Lakeland. For those of you who followed us along, it's been a long, hard road. Years ago, we did stories that Lakeland didn't approve of. We saw things that were unsafe. We told them. They didn't listen. We told the public. Then they started listening. They also, at that point, decided that we were the enemy, and that unless we started writing, quote, unquote, nice things, then, well, we were expendable. Well, the Constitution wins. The rights and responsibilities of a free journalist wins. 
but it took a long time. There's been a lot of heartache, and the people I care about, the people who supported me, have been pretty well abused in the process. So why am I here? Because it's our job, because journalists go where the truth is, go where the stories are, go where the people are, and more important, they support their constituency. That's what we're doing here. So what do we think? Well, it's not the Lakeland of old. I've been coming out here for the better part of 30 years. It's much smaller than it used to be from a standpoint of attendance. One of the major manufacturers told me that he could count pretty much on seeing about 80% of what he saw the year before, year after year, which means at this stage, things are getting a little thin. The vendors will tell you, it's getting really tough to make a buck at Lakeland. There are also problems with services and support, and a lot of them are talking about cutting back or not coming back at all. At the same time, they have an amazing volunteer cadre here. There are amazing people putting their heart and soul into this and trying to do the best that they possibly can. Some of the volunteers are, in fact, the ones trying to spearhead changes at this organization and this fly-in needs, but the fly-in apparently doesn't want to hear it. That can't go on for long because this organization and this fly-in survives, most of all, on the strength and support of its volunteers. Is Sun and Fun worth saving? Can it be saved? Frankly, I don't have a clue. What I see here is uh, the result of many years of hard work, people who believed in it. Uh, from that point alone, it does deserve to be saved, whether it can be. We're in a bad economy and an industry that's been depressed for a number of years. It's going to take a tremendous amount of effort. But the thing I fear most is that the collapse of an event like this could hurt the industry beyond repair. So, yeah, it needs to be saved, whether or not it deserves it. But more important, aviation needs to find a way to find the best and brightest, put them uh, first and foremost in front of people, and more important, in front of people who don't know aviation but want to know about it. This in the past has been a perfect venue for that, and it should be again in the future. We have high hopes, but then again, the evidence suggests that there's a really big battle ahead of them. We'll see. In the meantime, though, we'll do our job, we'll cover it, and God willing, we'll see you here next year. For the Aero News Network, Airborne and Aero TV, I'm Jim Campbell. And finally, with the price of Avgas continuing to climb, diesel engines are making strong inroads into the GA market. Premier Aircraft Sales is offering a conversion for some models of the Cessna 172 to a diesel power plant. Art Spangler, Premier's Vice President of Operations, explains how the process works. Tell us about the 172 upgrade program. Well, the 172 upgrade program, Tom, is putting a 2.0 Centurion engine, a Fadex system, and a Hartzell propeller, and they are made in Germany, and we're installing that on the Cessna 172s, and it's also available for the Piper Warrior 2 and the Warrior 3. The biggest thing in this whole thing is the fact that it's half the fuel consumption. A normal Lycoming engine will burn from 8, 9, 10 gallons an hour. The Centurion operating on diesel fuel or Jet A here in the United States is anywhere from 3.7 to 4.6 gallons per hour. So you have a 50% in fuel savings right out of the, right out of the starting gate. We'll have more sun and fun news in our next edition of Airborne. Details of all these stories can be found at www.aero-news.net. And look for extended versions of these interviews coming soon to Aero TV. I'm Ashley Hale. Thanks for watching.